Hey there, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I see a lot of familiar faces here. Hello, Marie. Looks like it's nice out in Washington. Hello, Cynthia from Maryland. Got people from New York. I'm trying to scroll through here. Everybody seems to be joining in. So welcome, welcome. Uh, feel free to shout out any questions as we go along. I'm going to try to dig into it. Welcome. Actually, oh, got to turn off my speaker. Um, Hope everybody's having a great day. I know it's another beautiful day here in Colorado. We're getting ready for some snow coming in the next couple days. So uh, those of you up in New England, I feel your pain. I've heard about the, the snow you guys got up there. So um, feel free to shout out any questions as I go along. Like I said, looks like we're losing focus here. I don't know. Just gonna adjust the manual focus here. Uh, hold on just a sec. I think actually. Sorry about this. Just want to make sure I feel like the focus is all screwed up. Um, there we go. I had it set to autofocus. It was just gonna just be a challenge for everybody. Audio seems to be good. Um, shout out if you have any kind of concerns about that. Um, as you can see, and if you've read the, the description, uh, we are working with this right now. Uh, this is a belt, hence the title. Um, sorry about that. I just wanna make sure that everything is clear. There we go. Um, what I found challenging about this setup, you know, it's a very simple object, but it's the coiling in particular that I think is going to be a really uh, interesting challenge. Uh, of course, we have light and shadow, we have form, um, but it's kind of keeping my mind organized around this coil and making it feel correct. There's some irregularity to it, um, but there's also kind of a, a nice structure to it. Um, I like the materials as well, the leather, the, the brass there in the, the buckle. Uh, that was the challenge. I got my hands on some rag paper. I've talked about that in some of the previous, uh, pre previous drawings um, as well as uh, that I was hoping to do that and I've done that. Um, and, and what you're gonna see in this one that, that may be a little bit different is, is how the charcoal responds to the surface. So much of what this assignment, or not this assignment, this session is about is um, really just kind of exploring the paper and the interaction between the materials and the paper. So um, that's what I'm gonna be focusing on a lot. And what I've, um, as I've been kind of working with this and experimenting with the rag paper, it's reminded me of what I've really loved about it before. Um, I have a, a minor in printmaking. I spent a lot of time uh, working as a, as a printmaker doing intaglio prints. And I just loved the material. I would print with this sometimes as well. And, um, there's, there's something about the grain of the paper that I really respond to and it, it, and it, um, it allows you to create a sense of atmosphere while also being able to create sharp focus. So with a, a Bristol paper or something like that, that's really smooth. It's great for fine detail. Um, but it becomes a little bit more challenging to create atmosphere. Um, and with this rag paper, I feel like it becomes more versatile and you're going to see that it it releases the charcoal in a unique way as well. Um, I've taken a few stabs at creating the, the kind of the line work for this, thinking my way around the, the overall shape. Um, and, and so you can see I've, I've started to build up some charcoal as well. Um, what I'm looking at is the height versus the width relative to the, um, the reference photo, which I have up here just to my left. Um, so I feel like this is working out all right so far. I've got some negative space in here I can use. Now one of the, the things that becomes really challenging with this and one of, what I like about the challenge of creating this, of this coiled object are situations like this where we have the, 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 the height of the belt here and it wraps around as kind of a band around here. 
the placement of this back edge line here, so now we go from seeing the front of the belt to the back of the belt, the placement of this is really what's critical. And in, right now, I have it too far over to the right. If I look at the reference photo, we can see that you know these, uh, these points here are much closer together. And I wanna use that um, to help establish the, the overall perspective. Uh, so I can, I can double check uh, this line here and this one as well. If I get this wrong, if I move this point too far up, it's gonna make the belt feel like it's tilted in. If I move it out too far to the right, it's gonna make it feel like it's flopping over this way. So paying attention to how those marks interact is really kind of critical here. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of keep laying this out, but I'm not worried about kind of building up value. I'm gonna be using all of this charcoal here to, to kind of build up some atmosphere. And what you're gonna see out of this um, rag paper is that it is going to release the charcoal in a different way. Um, I find that it, it it's a it's a kind of more durable fiber. So if you're unfamiliar with what rag paper is, um, you have paper that's made from wood, um, which is kind of typical. Um, but rag paper is made from cotton, and and as such, it has just kind of a different grain, a different surface to it. Um, I've actually tried making it on my own before using kind of shredded cotton T-shirts, and that's a lot of fun as well. So. Um, you know, they make paper from all sorts of fibrous materials. Uh, and I, I find that cotton is really kind of an interesting one. I think it's important to experiment and try different things out. So um, again, just thinking about the overall width to the height, trying to come up with something that feels pretty good. Here we see the, 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 the belt here kind of popping up out of that coil, um, but I want to visualize how that coil behind it would pass through to make sure that they visually connect. Um, creating this coil here, paying attention to the negative space and the shape that is made here. Um, and then this is largely in shadow, but I can see the, the back side here. Um, and then kind of a process that I do a lot, and you've seen me do it, I've just, I'm taking the, you know, the palm, the pad of my hand, just kind of wiping that down and um, and I can take another stab at it. And all of that information stays uh, on the page. I can see it. Uh, it just starts to build up value. Uh, I want to think through the overall kind of perspective of the buckle here. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm kind of transferring the line. So if I, if I hold my pencil up here, lining it with the top edge of the belt buckle, carrying it over, lining up with the bottom edge, carrying that over, and then the other kind of the perpendicular ends. I might be able to change that angle a bit. And this again, if you're working from life, this all happens um, using some sight measuring. If you close one eye, hold your pencil out in front of you, something like this, and you can line it up with the object and you're, you're transferring the same, the same way. It's the same concept. It becomes a little bit more challenging working from life, but I really encourage that you do that as much as possible. Uh, I know you've, you've heard me say that before. Um, as I, as I, I'm feeling more confident about this, I wanna take some time to shout out everybody. We've got people from North Carolina, India, all right, Nairobi, North Dakota, hello everybody. From Florida, it's hard to keep up with everybody. One of the things I'm gonna to try to do towards the end of this session is go back and read through this in case, um, if, in case you have a question that I miss. And this is what happened last time is that as I, after the, the session ended, I went back through the comments and there were a handful of questions that I wish I had addressed. Um, and so I wanna make sure I get to everybody. And so if, if you're watching and you have to kind of jump off, um, and, but you have a question, then you can revisit the recording, watch it again, and I'll be able to answer your question there. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to keep, <laughs> I'm looking up here at the camera to check out the focus. It looks like it's focused here. It's, it's tough because I've, I've wiped this down and it's, I can't tell if my drawing is out of focus or what. Um, but, so I'm just kind of playing around with that. Uh, I, I feel like 
I think I think I've got this now. Um, it, again, it's hard to tell if whether it's my drawing or whether whether it's the camera. Um, I'm going to start blocking in and just kind of pay attention to um, if if you've been watching the other drawing videos, if you've seen how the charcoal responds to the paper, and just kind of pay attention to what's happening here as well. You can see the grain of the paper as I smooth this out some. I'm not worried about maintaining kind of the, the integrity of the, uh, the line work that I've got. If I lose it on the paper, I've still got it in my mind. I've gone through the, I've gone through the correction of the, uh, uh, of the perspective and the proportions once before, and it's just gonna be easier to recall that if I lose those. Um, so if I squint my eyes, I start to see the overall shapes. I'm just looking back and forth quickly between the reference photo and the drawing. And I can use, I have a kind of, a, I have it projected up on a screen to my left here that I can refer to as well. Uh, well, I have a question here for people. Um, oh, typing in all caps. I think that, that works out well. It helps me to see that. Um, whatever, whatever works. Uh, Wilma just had a suggestion that if you do have a question, you can type it in as in, in all caps. It makes it a little bit easier for me to see, and it kind of calls that out. Uh, it's been really awesome in, in such a short time to be able to, to meet so many people from so many different parts of the world. Uh, I hope that you're taking some time to, to kind of draw along. So even if you're not drawing along as I do this, you're just kind of soaking it in, that you're taking some time to then uh, apply it to your own work uh, I, I know I've mentioned this before, but drawing is something that I, I neglect too often, and I hear that a, a, from a lot of the artists that I work with. Um, we get so seduced by the color of paint, or you know, the texture and the materials of you know watercolor or oils or pastel in particular. That's a really um, enticing medium um, that we we sometimes forget that you know we can take some time to just hone our drawing skills. Um, and then try to apply that to uh, apply that to our painting. So this buckle is going to cause me trouble, and there's a nice, you know, there's distinct layers in the reference photo. I know the buckle is on top of that dark belt, um, and I want to try to avoid um, kind of drawing the negative spaces uh, around the the buckle too early. I want to think of more about this dark value of the belt and then build that buckle on top of it. Um, and this is where the paper comes in handy. And I think it's just healthy to experiment. You know, different papers are going to release different ways and the way you use the material may be different than somebody else. Um, I know that this paper is going to release the charcoal. I can erase down a, a bit uh, more than some other papers. Um, and so I'm not worried about losing that buckle. I'm going to erase that out. I'm more concerned about creating that layer of dark um, behind it. And so you, this is the atmosphere that I'm talking about. Look at that. It's just this beautiful, soft texture that I really like. And you can use that to enhance your drawing. And I'm going to try to do that maybe artificially enhance the, the drama of the drawing by selectively focusing uh, the, the detail in the work. So using some selective focus by enhancing the detail in some areas, letting it just fall into atmosphere in others. Um, I find this really helpful in portraiture, um, just creating nice, subtle, soft light. It's been a long time since we've done I've done any kind of portrait work, but that's something that I'm going to be incorporating into this series. So if you stick around, I'm hoping next week to start thinking about some uh, kind of drawing some facial features. Um, and one of the other things too is if you have a particular subject uh, that you would like me to address, feel free to throw that in the comments, and and I'll I'll try to work that into my repertoire. Largely what I've been doing now is just I'm just using what's around my apartment since we're asked to stay indoors. But I'm trying to vary it 
to some degree so that, you know, we're doing some food some days, um, some, you know, a belt today, a hat last time, um, you know, the glass of water, trying to, trying to vary it up a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to try to work on some, uh, work on some facial features, I think as well. And I think this, this paper is going to help me with that. So this is just vine charcoal that I'm working with, and this is white paper. So I'm just working with charcoal. I've got my charcoal pencil. I've got some vine charcoal, my kneaded eraser, and rubber eraser as well. Portraits, all right. I'll work on that. It's not my strength, <laughs> but that's why we're here, right, is, is that we're, we're using this time to build our skills. So I'm a little nervous about that. I, I'm more of a landscape painter, and, and uh, you know, I've spent more time working on uh, uh, still lives like these, but I am very much looking forward to addressing it. We just filmed, um, and you'll, you'll see it soon, it's going to be released, um, uh, a portrait drawing video um, here at Artist Network with um, Nathaniel Skousen. He's a, he's a master portrait artist, and he kind of walks through that process. So I learned a lot working from him, or working with him on that video series. So I'm going to try to apply some of those lessons that that he he shows in his in his video. All right. So again, just kind of building it up, taking it down. I just love that that, that again that atmosphere. Um, this is all just the vine charcoal, kind of rotating it around, so it's kind of flattening out in some areas. Don't know if that picks up, um, but that that helps me to create this kind of broad um, and it's kind of these broad swaths. And one of the things that I've talked a lot about in the previous drawings are the, the cross contours and the direction, directionality of the marks. Here with this cotton rag, um, it's so soft and the vine charcoal responds to it in such a way that it, it, it creates this atmosphere and we lose those, those marks. And so, again, we can use those to our advantage selectively. Um, I'm ignoring some of the highlights right now. I'm going to bring those in a little bit later. A lot of this is still just kind of thinking, double checking the overall form to make sure that I've, I've got my, my thinking correct about the form. And I can do some negative drawing, use the eraser. And so you can see that even though I have these curves in front of me, my wrist is locked and I'm really drawing with the, the whole of the arm to create that curve. Um, and some of these times, like in this, in this instance, for example, I'm taking a few passes without it even touching the paper um, until I can kind of see the curve. And then once I'm you know, happy with it, I'll gradually lower the, uh, the charcoal uh, to, you know, to leave some of those marks there. Um, and again, I, one of the things we've talked about a lot so far is approaching curves in a way that we're accumulating together um, a sequence of shorter straight marks. So kind of thinking through the basic direction of the curve at each point and then kind of piecing it together. So in my mind, I'm, I'm still trying to do that. Um, again, squinting. Start to build up some of these values here. And I'll come back in later with the compressed charcoal and, uh, and, and make some of these marks more permanent. And so in this case, what I'm trying to do is see the whole of this form. We have three bands of that belt um, tightly packed together here and I'm trying to see this more as a singular form more than anything and, I, and then I can go back in like I'm doing here to to define that you know to break that apart a little bit more but I want to make sure that the, the, at this point the, the primary um, objective is to see this overall shape And then uh, let's see, they get 
It's a little bit lost in shadow here. Can let that be subtle and soft. There's a kind of a gradation across here. Build it up, take it down. Oh, my head's not getting in the way. That's been the problem is in the past is getting my head in the way. So if I if I get kind of lost, just let me know. <laughs> and I call out and if, you know if my head just starts dipping in the way. All right. All right, that's feeling pretty good. And now what's what's kind of nice about this is with the shadow kind of projecting off to the right here, I'm naturally creating that just by allowing my hand to kind of rub against the drawing. So I'm not worried about protecting that. It's just, it's serving me at this point. And so you can kind of see that it, it this, this starts to really illustrate what I've been uh, talking about in some of the previous drawings as well as the idea that when you're drawing something, you're really allowing something to emerge on the page. And we can start to see this as kind of gradually coming into focus. Make sure that that angle's good. And let there be some kind of natural atmosphere I can do some negative drawing as I focus on the kind of the building up the, the darker values of the belt behind the, the buckle. Uh, so what I'm doing as I'm looking at these areas, looking at that shape, comparing it, going back and forth quickly between the drawing and the, uh, the reference photo in front of me, kind of moving my eyes rather quickly and see how they, see how they feel together. You can look at the drawing on the big screen here. I can just barely see some of the lines on the page where I, I, um, I sketched out the, uh, the, the buckle. So I'm kind of using those as a guide, but I'm really trying to just use some negative drawing here. I can correct, lift up the charcoal a bit with my finger as I need to. So perhaps a different approach than, than what I've used in some of the previous ones. Uh, I'm trying to, trying to think kind of holistically about the whole drawing more in this one. I think by this stage and some of the, the previous ones, I. I would have started really kind of focusing in one spot and moving my way down, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do something different with this one, I think. And that just seems to be what's happening. All right. It's gonna stick with this. Just again, just using the vine charcoal, kind of rolling it a, a bit. Um, so as I'm working on some of these broad areas, it's sharpening the edge of the charcoal that I can then use to add some detail later. This is not right here, okay. Um, hmm. needed to focus a little bit in this area. Something doesn't seem quite right here. So I need to think through the, the, the way those bands kind of pass together. So here we have this interesting form of this curve that comes out from underneath the belt, wraps around here, and then back behind. And so it kind of comes in and out and, and trying to understand where uh, this portion of the belt sits. What is it in, in front of? Is it on top? You know, looking at those kind of concave shapes is a bit of a challenge. So I'm trying to trying to think my way through that and squinting my eyes. 
looking at the negative space. So looking at this shape here, So here I've kind of lost the edge of that belt. So I know I'm going to, I'm kind of in my mind, I know I'm going to have to kind of erase out some of this area. Hello from Saudi Arabia. All right, we got people from New Jersey. Yeah, human body parts. I will work on that then, I think. So next week I will incorporate at least one, one body part, um, you know, depending on, you know, how much time we have, you know, I can, uh, you know, drawing a, a full portrait can take some time, so maybe we can break it apart into multiple sections or just focus on individual body parts um, and focus on how they all work together, the overall proportions. That's always kind of tricky. All right. Whew, how are we feeling about this? Just as marks, I like the way the charcoal responds to the paper here. Uh, one of the things you're going to see me do, I talked about this in the last one as well, but I, I grabbed my, my rubber eraser and I actually shaved it off. I took a razor blade and I cut it uh, into these kind of wedges, and that allows me to have a sharp point. Um, that I can use. I can use a smaller one, I can use a bigger one, um, but I, I like to do that um, to, to, with, the, with the rubber erasers to kind of give me a little bit more control. I don't think I'm going to be using the white chalk the way I have in some of the previous drawings. I'm going to try to create the highlights by erasing down to the white of the paper. All right. I'm feeling pretty good as I as I look at the the big screen off to my left here. It's feeling pretty good in terms of the overall proportions. This 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 is what feels off to me. Let's see, right here. That's it. Let's bring this down in here. I kind of have lost this angle. I think what what I was thinking about is, you know, when as I established this angle, my instinct was to create this edge at that same angle. Um, and as you can see, it's very different. There's a bit bit of a twist, um, and so that's really critical. If you're if you're following along, if you have your own similar object, um, those subtle shifts um, in the in the edges as they as they kind of wrap around, as they coil around each other. Uh, that's what really creates our understanding of that form. All right, I think that's feeling a little bit better. Looking at the negative space in here, it's feeling good. All right. So I'm going to be doing a lot of negative drawing with the eraser coming up pretty soon. But so far, this seems to be working to kind of build up those values. When I'm looking at the when I'm looking at the paper, I'm doing a lot of squinting, seeing how that relates to the the um, the reference photo. And then we can see there's a strong highlight here, but less so down in here. I love how this, in, around in here, it just kind of, kind of fades off. We get some bounce light against that edge that it really softens that. So we get this kind of hard line across the top. We can see it kind of more visibly here, but then it just becomes more atmospheric and ambiguous down on that side. I'm going to ignore the holes in the belt for now. I'm going to, I want to make sure I get the overall form right. Um, and then I can, I can place those in there. All right. 
Uh, Cynthia, yes, a good question about value. When I'm talking about value, I'm talking about the relative lightness or darkness of something. So if, if you think about the value scale, it runs from white on one side, black to the other, um, and you're, you're working in that range in between. Proportions will be good. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, yeah. Proportions are really, it's, it's a lot about what drawing is. It's about constantly looking at those proportions and tools for that. So you have a lot of tools available to you. You have um, sight, you know, comparative measuring, you have angle sighting, um, you have um, using your plumb lines as well, and I kind of incorporate all of those together. Um, and so when I talk about kind of comparing an angle from the reference to the drawing, that's, uh, that's comparative, or that's, that's angle sighting. I'm, I'm carrying those angles across, and I'm looking at how they might interact with one another. Uh, comparative measuring, um, it would be something like this, taking say this as a dimension um, and comparing that to other aspects of the drawing. So if I take uh, this measurement from here, from the highlight from this corner to the, this corner here, if I turn and I keep that, I can, uh, that same measurement, I can compare it to this distance here and it shows that it's a nice square. I can compare it to here and see that it's a little bit shorter just because there might be some, some perspective there, uh, but pretty close. I can compare kind of the height of the, this loop to other parts of the drawing as well. Um, you can look at not only proportions within an object, but using that, using that to compare to the spaces in between. So if I take this as a measurement, I can compare it and I can see that it seems to align with the distance from this point to this point. Um, and there's no real kind of hard and fast rule as to what you use as a base for your comparative measuring. I just happen to go to that that portion in the buckle, um, and then but if you if you decide for yourself what kind of stands out as a measure as a as a basic unit, um, you can start to compare that basic unit to to um, elements of that object throughout the whole um, throughout the whole uh, drawing there. Um, so that's comparative measuring using plumb lines. So the idea of a plumb line is that if you draw a vertical line down from a key point where does that intersect? Where does it bisect other portions of the object? So I could draw a plumb line here, for example, if I take this point and I draw a line straight down from it, I can see how it cuts through this portion of the belt and it cuts through pretty closely this, this side of the, this hole here. So I can use this point, if I've placed it correctly here, I can use that as a guide to then place the, the hole here. Um, it's, there's a bit of an angle, um, but I can largely kind of use that as a as a guide. Um, so I could take this corner here, for example, as another key point, carrying it up, see where it intersects portions of the belt, how much is to the left, how much is to the right, carrying it down, uh, see where it bisects this portion of the, the buckle, how much is to, is to the left, how much is this to the right, etc. So those are a few tools that you can use. Um, and as you practice them, it becomes more intuitive and, uh, and you start to use all of them interchangeably. Sometimes you can um, physically draw it on the page, uh, or you know you just have you can hold that in your mind and just use that as a as a tool in your mind as you're laying out um, certain things. So, all right. So hopefully that makes sense. More colored pencil. I'd have to get my hands on some of those. I haven't worked with colored pencil a whole lot. I know that's a that's a really kind of tricky medium to work with, but I will give that a shot. So now what I'm doing is some negative drawing. It's kind of erasing back out. And you can see how easily that lifts off the page. You know, as I'm smudging around like this, I'm not picking up a whole lot of charcoal, uh, but it's at the same time that the, the rag paper is really releasing it. So now again, what I'm doing is looking at the negative space, the shape of the white that's around the belt and using that to define the edges. And, and when you're, you're doing this, you want to use those same tools that I just talked about um, for proportions. Uh, but you're just doing that kind of, you're just doing that with the negative spaces. So you're still thinking about the width and the height of this, the shapes there. So I'm thinking about the, the angle on this side of the, uh, of the belt. And 
And so what, what I did there is that, you know, I had built up charcoal over in this way, uh, and I, 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 was, I worked out the angle to the right of it just to kind of practice that angle, and then it kind of crept up to where I think it should be um, given the proportions and the measurements that I'm, I'm looking at. So I'm just kind of sneaking up on those proportions until I get a good feeling for it. All right. Uh, this is a bit more of a kind of a painterly approach. I have a hard time kind of thinking in other ways because I've been painting for so long that um, I, I think of it as of drawing very much as you know, very similarly to how I tackle a painting. Where you're, it's both an additive and a subtractive process. Uh, you know, so everybody has their own kind of way of working, and you're going to try things that work, you know, better for you that may not work for me, and vice versa. But just kind of give you a sense of, of where this is coming from. All right, thinking about this overall shadow, and then within that, there's some variation. Um, Getting some of that, that shadow put in there. Think about the shadow shapes. Uh, that's something I talked a lot about in the first few videos. So if you haven't seen those, go back and watch them. But there's the form shadow. There's the shadow that is on the form of the object. So we can see that this belt, it, it goes from light on this side into shadow on this side. So there's shadow over here, the shadow in here. Then there's the cast shadow. Um, that's the shadow that the object casts onto the surface, so that's what this is over here. And then there's the shadow shape, which is the accumulation of those two together. Uh, and, and you want to build up the ability to see both of those as much as possible. All right. Now, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? I think I want to start to pull out some of those highlights to see where I'm at in terms of value. Uh, again, one of the things that we, we've learned uh, in this whole series is that value is relative, and we key to the values on the page. That means we, we adjust and we calibrate our understanding of those values um, constantly, and our instinct is to, and what our brains do, is that when we see the darkest dark um, on the page, we we interpret that as black. Um, the reality is, is that you know this. We're, we're starting to see that as black, but when we when we put the charcoal next to it, we realize how much darker we'll be able to go. Um, and then the same with white. You know, we we uh, we're going to take the lightest part of the page and we're going to interpret that as as uh, as white, even though it may not be. You know, uh, there's still some value here, um, but we're going to interpret it as white. Uh, so looking, if you're looking for the previous videos, if you're on the Artist Network YouTube page, they're all up there at the top. There's a playlist of the series. I think the first one is just called Drawing Together. Um, and what did I do for a subject there? Oh yeah, I just drew a cup. Just so you, you're working with uh, charcoal there. Um, and, and we've done some landscape. Then we kind of really just been focusing on this series of drawing singular objects just stuff that's around the apartment uh, because we're again we're kind of being asked to stay indoors i'm really looking forward to getting out and painting more in the landscape you know there's um you know we're allowed to get out but i've been kind of spending my time indoors focusing on building my skills for when i do get out uh, now, one of the things we talked about as well in previous drawings is being able to switch between thinking about just basic abstract shapes in your drawing and then thinking about the object itself. And so, for example, as I'm working out in this area here, in my mind, I know this is a brass buckle. Uh, but as I do that, I carry kind of some preconceptions about what it should look like, what it is. And so um, I'm trying to shed that at this point and just think of them as abstract shapes, thinking, thinking of this highlight as a thin line moving in this direction. And it's a light line. Um, and thinking about the shape of these highlights uh, and uh, trying to identify those and not thinking that 
thinking of it as a highlight on, um, on the buckle. Uh, but then there, there are times when it becomes really helpful, you know, in this area, for example, here, uh, sometimes thinking about the abstract shape, it, it becomes challenging. And it can be helpful to think logically about what we're looking at as an object and breaking it down and saying that this is one ridge of the inner loop and which loop is it and where does it carry through to the other side and does it line up. Uh, and in those types, that kind of switching back and forth between understanding the form of the object and understanding what the, the, the logical um, structure is of it and then thinking about it as a shape and just a pure abstract shape is really helpful to be able to kind of switch back and forth and use to your advantage. But you want to be careful not to stay in that mode um, too long. You, know, you want to be able to switch back and forth. Hopefully that makes sense. Worry that that was a bit of a word salad there. So a shout out if, you, if you're confused at all. Kind of overstating the highlight in this area here. So I haven't even gone to the compressed charcoal pencil, which is going to give me kind of finer lines. Um, I haven't needed it yet. I'm just using the vine charcoal. building up those values. And then as I, as I continue to uh, work on this and, and allow this object to emerge on the page, I'll switch to that compressed charcoal for a little bit more control and depth and value. Doing a little bit kind of working from left to right because I know that this is all just getting smudged right here. So um, something, something still seems wrong with this curve. I feel like it's just too, too open. And maybe what I need to do is actually bring this down. This is one of the nice things about this paper is that um, I can move things around. I've used that analogy before in some of the earlier videos is the idea that you're almost think of, think of the process as though you're drawing in sand and that you, you're, um, you're making your marks and you're moving them around. You want the pages to feel like they're moving in place on, on the surface of the paper. Um, and it, it kind of, I use the analogy of the, the jigsaw puzzle where it's a, it's a rare person who can reach into a box of a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, pull out a piece and say, ah, I know exactly where this goes, put it on the table, never move it again, and then just keep building it like that. But we sometimes approach drawing in a similar way. We'll put a mark down and we'll see, well, there it is. And it, there's, it becomes permanent in our mind. And, the, and that starts to skew our, our awareness, our perception of the drawing, because we just don't want to move those marks. Um, but the more you can uh, really become comfortable uh, with the idea that your, these marks are just initial thoughts and that they can shift and move fluidly across the page, the more accurate your, your drawing is going to become. So when you do put together a jigsaw puzzle, a more typical approach would be to pour out a bunch of pieces and then you start to gather information about what's on each of those pieces and where it might go in the, in the broader context of the, of the scene. Um, and then you, you move them around. So as you're gathering information about the individual pieces and the whole, they kind of move and lock into place. And you want to think about your drawing as the same way. It's about gathering information and constantly adjusting. Uh, so here, uh, where I'm thinking about this path along here and how it, it transitions from dark. And then we get the highlight along in here so I can start to pull that out. It's kind of tapping with the kneaded eraser. So it, I just, I love that ability where I can you know, I'm moving, using my finger here, I'm kind of smudging that around, but I'm not picking up a whole lot of charcoal. Um, but yeah, I can just lightly tap with my eraser and there it lifts. And, and that's a huge advantage. Um, sometimes I don't want that. Sometimes I want a paper that will just grip the material, not let go. All right, I feel like I need to sharpen this edge up a little bit. And this is where I can come in with my shaved eraser 
and kind of refine that down a bit. And what happens with the uh, with the rag paper is that you you can generally get down to a brighter white because you're kind of removing that that top layer of fuzz um, and and getting back down to kind of the pure white of the paper underneath. Let's see here. Just switching to my left hand so I can get that at angle a little bit, but I don't have very good control over that. I've got so much charcoal on my, my the right hand that I don't, <laughs> don't want to smudge that right now. All right, um, let me go to my compressed charcoal pencil and start to make some more kind of permanent lines along in here. And if I do have my kind of smudging stick so I can start to smooth that out. Remember that this is this is a drawing tool tool. Everything or a drawing tool as well. So everything that you have you're you're making marks if you're even if you're just smudging like this, you want to be thinking about it as making a mark. You're not just smoothing things out. You're always always drawing, always always constructing. All right. How's that looking? That's starting to build some form, some subtlety in the shadow there. How are we doing on time? Oh man, it's been a long time. This is, <laughs> I think this drawing is going to take a little bit longer. I didn't realize 45 minutes has already gone by. Ooh but you can see it's starting to emerge. I don't think it's actually going to take a whole lot more to pull this thing together, but stick around. We'll, we'll build this thing. Oh, I am getting in the way. Going to start working through now, kind of locking in some of these darker areas. And so now, what was previously kind of the darkest dark, some of these areas become a kind of a lighter value. All right. I feel like I can sharpen this up along here. some of that texture kind of play in there. Um, sharpen up this. Here we got some negative drawing where it's darker behind that dark rim of the, of the belt. I'm going to turn this on its side. This is a kind of a broad area of value. So um, as I as I switch my my grip a bit and work on the side of the charcoal, it's just going to sharpen it, and I'll get that sharp point again when I, for when I need it. So thinking about the transition along this edge. Thinking about the paths along in here. Uh, from calling from Sweden, you're watching. It's what's that about quarter to ten your time? Um, it's one o'clock in the afternoon my time. I'm in the Mountain Time, in Colorado, here in the U.S. Uh, so it's about one forty-five. Our time, so I'm switching my grip a little, little bit so I can get that curve. And again, I'm still thinking kind of negative drawing, thinking about the space behind this 
as a way to create the form in front. Yeah, so I'm doing this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And it has been a serious blast to be able to do this. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, at the same time. If you miss it, we've got the recordings up. But I think it's, it's, it's great to see uh, all the live interaction. Uh, Wilma well, asked what medium I use when I paint. I'm uh, primarily an oil painter. Um, I do like pastel as well, uh, but primarily oil paint. Um, and I, I painted with acrylics for a while because I got I'm a, an outdoor painter uh, primarily. And I, <laughs> I was painting on the East Coast and I got so tired of finishing a painting and to get back to my car the whole dang thing had been scraped off by the branches through the woods as I was hiking through the woods. So I switched to a, I switched to acrylic uh, briefly so that it would dry quicker and I didn't have that, that issue as, quite as much. Um, but uh, here, out here in Colorado, I don't have that, that problem. So um, it's generally more open. Here I got a battle of wind, holy smokes. Just down, just south of the the Wyoming border, where we can get some real strong winds. So as I'm going, as I'm working my way across, I I want to always be checking uh, the the placement of the forms. Um, you know, I had changed this shape here, which needed to necess uh, you know by necessity change the placement of the, the, the belt as it emerges behind this, this loop here. So I just want to kind of double check that, that path. So I'm still using the side of my pencil here. Using that, using kind of atmosphere to my advantage. Uh, but I can kind of refine this form down a little bit more. All right, I want to think through, there's kind of a, a flat quality to the shape that I want to think through before I really kind of define the individual bands. Um, and now as I, as I get to this portion of the belt where the, the buckle is in front, um, I want to be kind of mindful of what's happening there. So maybe I'll, right now I'm just, I'm gearing up for this, this buckle portion. I need to clear my mind a little bit. I realized as I got to that, I kind of lost some focus there. So I'm doing something in this portion of the drawing just to, um, just gonna clear my mind a little bit. Um, this doesn't take a whole lot of thinking. Kind of squinting as I go. If the marks become distracting, I can switch to these circular marks. This became it's a little bit too strong there. I want that to be a subtle, more subtle transition there. All right, now, kind of just thinking through this portion here. This gets a little tricky. There are a lot of overlapping shapes. Let's see what's, see what we've got. And I'm gonna come back to, come back to this in a little bit. All right, what do I wanna do here? thinking through. So I'm going to use my shading stump as a way to kind of visualize the marks a bit. Okay. 
I'm gonna try to remember to keep talking through, but taking a little bit more concentration than other portions. All right. So I just wanna be light with this for now. So I don't want to overstate the edges if I, as I, as I lay them in. There's a kind of a dark ridge along in here on the inside of that buckle. So I can use that to my advantage. But I'm leaving the outside edge more subtle because it's hard to really even see where that edge is. So I don't want to state something that I can't really see in this one, in this drawing. And I want to be careful, so as I lay down the mark in here, that's going to actually form the negative space. It feels like it's all right. It feels all right there. All right, and I'm looking at that negative space. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about drawing the belt, but I'm using the shape the space around it, so the belt behind the belt behind the buckle to kind of render that. So how's that feel? It feels. I guess that feels all right. I may not may not have hit it just right, but all right. So this gets a little bit tricky in here. We've got that center piece. Looking for some of the dark parts that I can use um, to my advantage. Ah, this feels like it needs to come up. So just looking at that negative space in there kind of illuminated the fact that I had kind of missed, uh, missed the mark a little bit in there. All right, how's everybody going, doing? All right. Thank you, Rachel, for helping out there, pointing people to the, uh, the previous recordings. Um, so uh, another question about the paper that I'm working on. Uh, I am using a cotton rag paper here. Uh, so this is uh, one that I was able to get my hands on that I'm thoroughly enjoying. Um, okay, what am I doing here? I am back to this spot. Sometimes you just got to step away, kind of gather your thoughts. And, and so I had kind of overstated the highlight a little bit earlier. I'd raced out too much, which is fine. so I can cut that back down. So as I'm laying down the line, I, I'm thinking that, it, that I want that to ultimately kind of be consumed by the dark values behind it. Um, and that's that, so I wanna be light with that, that line uh, as, much as, I, as much as possible, okay. And that's going to help add to the realism of the of the drawing. So, if you're kind of new to this series, one of the things I mentioned earlier on is that lines lines are abstractions. Uh, they don't exist in nature. Edges do, um, and we as humans have created a visual language um, that interprets edges as lines and is a very human and natural thing. You know, we draw, you know, smiley faces as, as an outline. A line is just a symbol for an edge. And you can, it's a very powerful symbol and you can use that to your advantage by 
um, adding expression um, and enhancing your, your line work. Uh, if you're going for true realism, however, it, it could work against you. Um, and so you want to be really mindful of what's happening along the edge and really what are you seeing. So as I'm looking at some of these thin areas, those I, I need to hold on my mind that that's not a line, it's a thin shadow. I want to be thinking constantly about them as edges. And that's just my goal for this drawing here. There may be another drawing that I do later where it's going to be all about line work and the expressive quality of line. And then you as the artist can decide for yourself you know, how, uh, how do you want to use line? If you're going for realism, you want to ask yourself, have I overstated the lines in, in any of the works? Um, have, I, have I made the lines too dominant? And so that's what I'm thinking along here. So as I lay down a line to define an edge, I want that to ultimately just disappear in the dark, darkness of the shape around it. And then I can do that as well. So as I, on the outer edge of this buckle, as I, as I lay that down that line, I'm just thinking mostly about the path, but I don't want to be too strong with it. And then that's, that's going to be consumed by this dark shape in here. And then right in here, I can define the, uh, the placement of that buckle by dropping that shadow in in here. And build up this shadow along in here as well. And so you want to kind of be mindful of various ways to create shapes. You know, I'm creating this shape here by just stopping my marks at a certain point, or you could draw a line and kind of fill it in. Um, but the more ways that you create, you can create shapes, the, the more kind of versatile your, your drawing uh, will, will be, your, your drawing practice will be. All right. I love the way that vine charcoal just lifts. Smooth that out. I'm going to reestablish the light. There's a little bit of thin shadow, uh, thin light coming through the shadow. Whew. All right, we're getting there. Let's see. This this seems off. So let me double check that. So if I look at this angle, what is that? Let's see if it's supposed to be like this, carry it over. How does this angle look? If I'm going to connect the highlights, is that working over here? There we go. Connect the highlights. And this has got to come in right in here. And then this maybe lifts out a little bit more. And then I'm going to kind of sharpen this up along in here. Thinking about selective focus. So if I'm going to use my line, I need to be uh, strategic about where I add that in. So because it's going to sharpen up some of those edges. Um, but I want to be I want to be selective in my focus here. Adding in some of the details. So what I'm looking at here is I add like this little stitch. I'm just looking at the shapes of the shadows and letting that kind of build the rest of the form. Now 
looking at this loop. Building that out. Um, let me see, really trying to pay attention to this form along in here. And I can go back in here again, just looking at the, really just drawing the shape of the shadow. And it doesn't take much to indicate that. And I want to kind of look at this transition along in here. Uh, right in here, I think, I think we're able to add some of the depth to the, uh, this centerpiece here. So here it's a, there's an overall dark shape um, and I have it pretty dark Then I can go even darker right in here to add some kind of volume to that. And then I, let me see, I can come back in in here, darken up a little bit, kind of being mindful of those edges. So in this case, now I'm going to kind of switch. I'm thinking about the path of this dark mark, but running these marks vertically. And then and then that helps to create that, that form. So we've got one, two, three, got to add that third. Add that third loop right in there. Feels a little bit better looking at this negative space. I think I need to adjust the thickness of some of these a little bit here. That feels all right now. If I if I want to, I can kind of refine some of the highlights along in here. Just kind of tapping along the edges to help create. And so what I'm doing is I'm just taking my kneaded eraser and sharpening it into this kind of paddle-like form that has kind of a sharper ridge to it. If I were, uh, if I were using my oil paints right now, I'd probably be using my, my palette knife to do some of this work. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about. But I love the kneaded eraser because then I can Kind of shape it to my, uh, do it into a shape that that serves my purpose. All right. This feels like it's too. It just needs to be softened a little bit right in here. And I feel like I can I can get away with darkening this line because there's this thin kind of shadow underneath this portion of the belt. That'll help pop that out. All right, that's feeling all right. Kind of smoothing that out, kind of sacrificing that, some of that clarity that I got, but I'm gonna use my eraser now to pull out the highlights again. And then I can darken this in some areas as well. How's everybody doing? Seems to be all right. Yeah, you have a question. Alice has a question. Let me see. Really, Alice says, I'm really new to drawing with charcoal. I find shadows harder to draw than anything. Any more pointers to make it easier for a new person? Um, my my assumption that I'm making that so correct me is that you may be having trouble creating kind of a smooth transition. Maybe it looks too kind of chunky. Um, you want to think about shadows just like you are any other shape um, in your drawing there, um, and think about the overall texture and the direction of your of your marks. I kind of get into this, which what's in one of the previous drawing videos that I've got here. Um, the 
uh, what was it? I had the, the eggs. Check out the eggs one. No excuses. Um, it has some more information about drawing shadows. Um, but what you might do is just practice drawing gradients with, with your charcoal. Don't worry about it being a shadow or being an object. Just practice working with your materials. Um, and when I mean gradients, is maybe a transition like this where it goes from light to dark. And, and as you build up your layers of charcoal, your initial, your initial layer is going to be somewhat chunky. Smooth it out, and then you take another pass at it, and you try to fill in the spaces between the dark spots. And then you smooth it out again, and then you start to fill in some of the er other areas where you can kind of smooth it out. And your goal is to try to make a smooth and even gradation from light to dark. And just that practice is gonna be um, helpful. Um, and practice using um, your vine charcoal and your compressed charcoal interchangeably. Uh, so there's gonna be some areas where you might find it helpful to use your compressed charcoal first and then use your vine charcoal on top. And then other areas where uh, you might find it more helpful to use your uh, vine charcoal and then your compressed charcoal on top of that. Um, so kind of practice both of those. And, and also be careful about using the, your um, finger tips to smudge. Sometimes that can be uh, troublesome because it, it leaves these oils on the paper. Uh, that, can, that can kind of mess things up. That's why I, always, I tend to kind of use the side of my hand to, uh, to, to smudge. I'm just adding some of these kind of detail areas in here. And so along in here, I see this kind of ridge where next to the highlight where it's a little bit darker. So I want to create that ridge as an accumulation of marks running this direction rather than lines running this way. And that's going to help to lock those values onto the forms a bit more. So thinking about the direction of my marks there. So hopefully that was helpful, Alice. Um, let's see. And practice different papers. See what works for you. Um, uh, you know, I've been working with some just regular kind of drawing paper. Uh, uh, it's been working out well. This is a switch to this cotton rag paper, which I've been enjoying. I'm getting closer to the end here. So thinking about building up these values um, before I get much farther. I think that I think the buckle is looking all right in terms of the perspective. Um, I'm just going to add a few little kind of details here. Again, just thinking about the shape of the shadows, not the not the light, and letting that create the suggestion of those stitches because I don't really want those to pop off. I want to make sure the form reads first before the details do. That's one of the the difficulties in in drawing is we, we want, we're often enticed by these fine details um, and, and it can be sometimes challenging to, for the form to hold together if everything's in sharp focus. So think about potentially varying the focus in your, your drawing. Uh, let me see, so I wanna, I'm gonna start to build up the form to show that it's a little bit darker along this edge where it wraps around. It's a little bit lighter, but then within that, we have some of these highlights. I'll need to do some negative drawing in here. And just kind of softening that out. All right, I'm gonna be thinking about this form. I've kind of lost it along in here. Here's what I wanna do is I wanna erase this down and then I'm gonna build up the values again, just to make sure that this loop sits on top of the belt behind it. All right, maybe darken this a little bit. Ooh, 
that lying it a little hard. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, again, this kind of sharp pointed eraser to pull out some of these sharper highlights. That seems to work out all right. How's everybody doing? All right. Anyone, not someone from Brazil? Yeah, I've seen a few people from Brazil here, so. Soft paint brushes are a great idea. I use ear swabs. Yeah, that's it. I think that's also a great tool. Uh, something you might also do, think about doing is as you're sharpening your pencil, if you gather, like maybe use sandpaper actually to get some of the charcoal dust, use that, kind of sprinkle over the, the drawing to create a smooth gradation. Um, that can be helpful as well. Experimentation is really helpful though. See what works for you. So Jackie using a lot of graphite. Um, yeah, charcoal can come in a similar um, range. It's, you know, they're both, when, it, when a pencil is made, whether it's graphite or charcoal, what it starts off is the, just the ground powder. So if it, you know, there's a, you, know, you, you pull out a big chunk of graphite from a graphite mine, grind that into a powder, and then that gets mixed with a binder. Um, and, and it's often kind of a clay-like material that that's, that's what gets formed into these rods that are encased in the wood. And so the amount of that binder determines the hardness of the material. Uh, so, you know, a, like a 4H charcoal or a 4H graphite, 4H, I mean, with graphite would have more of that kind of clay binder in it. Um, and so that's, that's what's ultimately affecting the, uh, the, the hardness and, and, and thus the value of the, the marks you're making. And so charcoal can come in, in a similar uh, scale as graphite it just has you know, more or less of that binder. Um, I like the two Bs somewhere. I feel like it's a pretty uh, versatile tool. It gets me the dark, uh, dark enough marks, but also is a little bit harder so I can get in there for some fine details. As you, um, as you go up the scale to a 6B or an 8B, it's often very soft um, and uh, can be, uh, you can get some really nice dark marks, but at that point, I, I prefer to use charcoal sticks if I uh, uh, if I need those dark values. So, okay, I'm just kind of placing the shadows, kind of working my way up to thinking about where these loopholes are. So I'm thinking about the just trying to think of the abstract shapes of these and how they change as I wrap around here. Getting this shape is really going to be critical in terms of suggesting the perspective. I can see that's a really thin kind of squished oval. And now I can come in and just kind of lift out a highlight. Now I've kind of overstated it. It's too much light. I can come back in and kind of refine that down a little bit. Kind of working both positively and negatively to create these, those little, little flicks of light that form that hole. Um, I feel like what needs to happen along here is I've lost this a little bit, but I like the atmosphere that's created. So I'm going to, but I, I want to, define this form a little bit more. So I'm going to darken that. Just kind of be trying to be mindful of the um, the edges here. So hopefully you can see in this this uh, with this rag paper there's this just this really nice atmosphere that that it's it's capable of creating. Um, every paper is going to work a little bit differently. Uh, How does everybody feel about that? I feel like that's pretty good. I can kind of kind of continue to pick along, but um, one of the things that I wanted to do is just kind of hang out a little bit longer. So I'm going to let this run um, 
and, and it kind of come back to any questions you may have. Um, again, I do this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, what do we have? Oh, next one on Monday is get that bread. So we're going to be working on a loaf of bread. Uh, that is something I have never drawn or painted. It's kind of a classic subject from a Northern Renaissance kind of still life is kind of loaves of bread. So I am really looking forward to that one. I have no idea how I'm going to tackle that yet. You know, what kind of approach I'm going to take. So, but we'll, we'll see this weekend. So that's what I'm doing on Monday. Um, if you want more drawing resources, check out the page, the drawing together page on artistnetwork.com. There's a link in the description. Um, we have lots of drawing resources. Artist Network is a, is a great, um, a great place for resources for artists of, of all levels. Uh, one of the things I've talked about before is we really try to um, have resources that meet you where you're at. Um, so if you're a beginner, if you're kind of more advanced, if you're somebody who's learned in the past, um, and then but you kind of set it aside for a long time, so you're not really a beginner, you've got some expertise, but you just need a little boost kind of just getting back in the game. There's resources available there too. Um, I know we've got a deal going on in our subscription library. That's really my, that's my job here at Artist Network is to produce those videos. So it's given me a, a great opportunity to learn from some, some top artists from around the world. Um, so just check out what we've got. But I'm thinking I'm gonna call this done. I'm just, like I said, I'm just gonna keep the thread going. So if you have any questions, I wanna go back through, see if I missed anything. Um, I really appreciate having everybody on. Again, seeing all these familiar faces. Um, it seems like people are learning from them. Bob says they define hardness to softness. H is for hard, B is for soft. That's right. Again, charcoal graphite comes in that same scale. This is a 2B, um, and that's, I actually have a few others uh, that I just haven't even grabbed. This seems to be working well for me, um, but I should probably experiment with some different hardnesses. Let's see, Alice, you know about the numbers on the charcoal. Oh yeah, Alice, so you're asking that question, HB or 6B, et cetera. So hopefully that answered uh, your, your question there. Sounds like everybody got some, some great input there. Um, yeah, uh, Jackie, uh, Alice, you're saying you're referring to Alice, you're referring to the brand and type of charcoal pencil. Yeah, you know, it, it all varies. Uh, and one of the things to be aware of as well is also the wood casing I've noticed. So some, some brands have kind of a, a softer wood, some have a harder wood, um, some will be easier to sharpen. Others, if they're too soft, it'll actually kind of break in the shipping process. And so you'll be, you know, the, the core inside will be broken. Um, so as you're sharpening it, it just kind of crumbles across, uh, uh, crumbles apart into these pieces, and that can get a little frustrating. Um, but there are a lot of really great brands out there that make some wonderful materials. And um, having worked with with some of them and had communication with some of them, they it's something that um, they definitely consider. It's, it's the quality of the raw materials. It's the process. Um, it's the whole package that that they consider. So. Um, half gloves for drawing. I'm not sure what those are. So um, somebody said, uh, I can't quite read the uh, that name there from this far, but recommend using half gloves for drawing. I'm not sure. So is that, I guess that's something that would protect your hand. Um, potentially whatever works for you. I know some artists will lay down a sheet of like a, a wax paper or a, a mylar or something like that underneath. Uh, their their drawing hand to help protect the drawing from being smudged. Um, so again, what try it out, see what works. I typically don't wear gloves when I'm outside painting. I'll do that, um, but even then, what I'll do is I'll, if it's really cold, instead of wearing a glove, I'll take a big wool sock, put it over my hand, and poke a hole through it for my brush. And um, now I just prefer to have direct contact with the with a pencil or with the with the um, you know, with the 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 brush. Uh, Wilma saying so much to process sort of brain overload. Yes, message unit overload. That's something for sure. We, there's a lot of information coming out uh, throughout the whole process and it can be overwhelming. And I think if you can uh, tackle it by uh, just taking it in chunks, then, uh, and, and as you're practicing, and if you're, if you're, say you're trying to improve your shading, just, just focus on that. Um, don't worry about everything else. If, if the proportions are off, 
great. I mean, that's that's fine. You're gonna you're gonna improve on those as well. Um, but if you can start to um, give yourself specific challenges uh, as you as you're practicing, that can sometimes alleviate that 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 overload of the of the message in your brain where it feels like there's just too much to think about. Uh, your brain will naturally get better at balancing all of that together. So initially, if you're working on proportions, for example, there's so many different processes that you can use. Uh, and if you just do one at a time, so do a whole drawing where you're only using comparative measuring uh, and maybe do a series of those, eventually that becomes more automated in your brain. It becomes more easy uh, to kind of access that. And then you add angle sighting or uh, you're using plumb lines, etc. And eventually it just becomes second nature and you can switch back and forth between them. Uh, and, and you don't even necessarily think about what you're doing. You just know hey, the proportion's off and you find yourself using comparative measuring. Let's see. So Alice is using mixed media paper. Uh, no, there's nothing wrong with mixed media paper at all. Um, it's, that's what it's designed for. It's designed to do a whole lot of things, what you might find. Uh, so in the last, this is the last one, I did a black drawing, uh, a white drawing on black paper, and that was using mixed media paper, and that worked just fine. It just didn't hold the, the pencil, uh, uh, the, the chalk as much as uh, another paper might, but you can still get a great drawing out of it. And so it, one of the things you just want to be aware of, and we often kind of, we kind of, we don't consider when we're evaluating our own drawing ability is the paper itself. We so focus so much on the, the marks that we're making with the tools um, that we're not considering that, you know, if it's not sticking, it may not be you, it may not be the charcoal, it may be the paper itself, and you just switch to something else. And that paper that you're using at that moment may not be right for that one drawing, but may be exactly what you need for another one. So it's not necessarily a matter of good or bad as what's working for you and what's not working for you. Now, so you're afraid, and I'm just kind of working my way chronologically back um, to the top. So we're kind of working in, in reverse order here. Yeah, Alice, yeah, definitely just keep at it um, if you're struggling with the shadows um, practice. And, and one of the things that I would do for my drawing students on, on ground is I would have them create a gradient in charcoal, and then I would create a, just a perfect square and say, all right, take an hour, and your goal is to create as smooth and even a square of value as you can. Um, not black or white, of course, because that becomes a little bit easier, um, but a middle gray. Try to get a middle gray that is smooth and even as possible, and what that does is it teaches you how to um, control the pressure of your material and fill in certain areas. Uh, and so, and if you disassociate from uh, uh, it being a particular object, it can sometimes be more helpful just to focus on that technique. Uh, so, all right, I think, did I get everybody? So, yeah, but if you're ever looking for the materials, I list them in the product description. Look for the reference photo there. Thank you, Wilma. So yeah, if follow along using the reference photo that I have or create your uh, own. Um, All right, you can just scan in through there. So I think we got, got most everybody. I'm gonna go back down to the bottom. All right. To Montreal, hello everybody again. Um, Oh, what sharpener do I use? Uh, I just have a small one, um, and I don't remember the brand of it, but I'll sharpen that, and I also use sandpaper a lot to sharpen. So what I'll, what I'll do is I'll often kind of clear off. I'll use a razor blade to cut away the core, um, like I do here. Um, so I'll cut away the core, and then uh, use sandpaper to kind of file that down if I need to. So, um, or I'll use just a, a, I have a small hand sharpener. Um, All right, hopefully everybody take some time to do your own drawing. I love it if we can find a way for everybody to be able to share what you're working on. Um, uh, yeah, Bob says a general pencil site gives good descriptions. Yes, I think that's a great resource. They've been around for a long time. Lots of good tools out there. So, all right. Um, thank you, everybody. I think we're going to call it a day. Hopefully I got to everybody. Um, I will see you again on Monday, again, 3 p.m. Eastern. I've had a blast doing this. So thank you so much 
and have a beautiful weekend.